Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So this time I just want to show you a quick hack that came real handy to me. So first of all, um, we all love cameras, web cameras, IP cameras, whatnot. And now that we have home assistant and smart homes, we will like to integrate those with our systems. And it usually goes just fine. But there are times when you find a camera that has good features, good price and whatnot, but still you're unable to integrate it with your own system. So in my case, these were with D-Links cameras. Basically, they have a good feature set, nice software, relatively good price. And uh, in general, I like D-Link as a company. But what I hate with these cameras is that they are so-called cloud cameras, which of course means that Everything the camera records goes through the cloud, goes through uh, D-Link's private servers, which is might be okay for some of you. For me, it's a bit troubling because, well, these cameras see stuff in my house and I don't want everyone to see that stuff. But whatever, let's uh, take privacy concerns uh, aside. Still, there's a problem. Whenever you go offline, you lose control of your cameras, you see all your, you lose all your feeds and so on. So what can we do about these? Uh, something that is not really advertised by the company. So if you take a look on the manual, it says cloud camera, it needs a phone application, the cloud account and whatnot, but let me show you a way that I managed to turn this into a uh, full-fledged camera that I could integrate with Home Assistant and I could actually use offline. So, follow these simple steps. First, what you need to do is have your camera's IP address at hand. This of course will be available after you have first time installed your camera, so do that. For this you have just need to follow the steps in your manual. Next you have to reset your camera. The reset button is basically a hidden small button on the rear of the camera. Uh, it might depend on the actual model, but uh, on mine it was just a small hole which I could poke with a needle or something like that easy. Push the button, hold it for 10 seconds or so. When the power light start to blink, the camera is reset. Then start with the installation process once again. But don't finish it. In my case at least, for the second time, the camera wasn't added to the cloud by default. It was just set up so it could access my Wi-Fi network. At that point, I could check the router and fetch my camera's IP. Now let's paste that IP into a browser. If you are running Firefox or Google Chrome, you, have, you will probably encounter this screen. This is pretty lame, but there's a workaround. You either use another browser like the Explorer or Safari, or you will try this URL directly. This brings you to the firmware's uh, web interface. Now here, just like with a router or an other network uh, device, you can do a lot of things. And for the, when you access this for the first time, you will be asked for a username and a password. Now the username is admin. And the password is something that you had to provide during the first installation. Once you are here, you can navigate to Setup, then Audio and Video. Now you should be able to see uh, Video Profile 1, 2, 3 and so on. Now basically these are just presets for uh, different camera image qualities. You can change them but ultimately you will need to select one. In my case the best preset is Profile 1 is the best quality my camera is able to provide. 
so I will need to watch out for this file name. This is just a part of the, the whole RTSP URL we will need. RTSP is a network protocol, uh, just like HTTP. So we will need to construct a URL starting with RTSP. And we'll just write it into the browser's uh, area bar, um, address bar. So it starts with RTSP. Then you will have to provide the username and the password. Like so. Then the IP address of your camera. Watch out for any trading spaces or stuff like that. Then the port number. Port number for RTSP is 554. Then you will need this last URL part. In my case, this is play1.sdp. Now, this is basically the URL which provides you direct links to the camera's live feed. Uh, you can uh, add this URL to Home Assistant. You can access it from a media player like VLC and stuff like that. So let's just try with VLC. And voila! Now the next step is to set up Home Assistant in case you want to use that. So if you have ever worked with Home Assistant before, you will find ending this camera pretty easy. So all you have to do is edit your configuration YAML file where you define your entities for Home Assistant and add a new entity called Camera. Then use the FFmpeg platform give some sensible name to it, then use the URL we just created in a, this way. So dash RTSP underscore transport TCP dash I then the URL. Basically that's it. One thing mentioning, worth mentioning though is that you will need the FFmpeg package installed. This is no big deal in most um, operating systems like Ubuntu is just an installation using a package manager. Once you have it, you can set your entity to be visible on your favorite UI. I'm using the new Lovelace UI uh, during my experiments with Home Assistant, so let me show this online. Okay, so this is just a basic configuration. You don't need to find any logic behind it. This is just some sample I created. So the main point is here. You need to use this picture glance type card. You can give a title and the most important point is that you must reference your camera entity here at entities, then also add the camera image parameter. And pretty much that's it. That's the configuration you will need. Once you have restarted Home Assistant or reloaded the configuration on the Lovelace UI, you will be able to see your camera feed. Just like that. So here we go. There's the camera feed. Okay, so as I said, the trick is simple. Unfortunately, I cannot promise you that this will work in your particular camera's case or work for any other cameras than mine. But uh, I can assume it because uh, Dealing seems to share the firmware and the service between their cameras. So, assuming that you have a camera at hand, you get it as a gift, or you have it from before your home assistant experiments or something like that, then it's worth a try, isn't it? Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. 
If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.